Hello. I'm very pleased to be here, actually, because you know I come from a, a landlocked country. You know, we don't have a sea, and uh, that's what uh, harms our nation. Actually, you know, when you can't see the horizon, it's really, you can really feel it in uh, in uh, in the mood of uh, people. And actually, the, the picture on the right side uh, is. Um, it's a Prague, actually, and I took this picture like uh, three days ago and never had an idea there is Africa in the middle of Prague. <laughs> this is the silhouette of a historical, you know, uh, part of a, of a city. And I was very impressed by the shape, by the similarity of the, of the continent and, and, and the Prague city center. I, I would like to mention that I, I'm probably la from the last generation uh, which uh, uh, grew up in a communism. In a, in a, you know, Czechos I was born in Czechoslovakia, and I often, you know, use this. Uh, I use my experience uh, in my work. You know, this is a, this is actually a sample of uh, how it looked uh, uh, those days. You know, on the streets, how, how was the, you know, graphics working uh, on the top of the buildings? You know, this is actually in Russian, like Russian. Uh, we were very influenced as we were part of a kind of Eastern Bloc. You know, uh, locked behind the Iron Curtain. You know, with uh, other Eastern European countries, and um, I had actually quite um, quite a nice totalitarian childhood, and uh, and uh, you know, at the age of ten, I you know we had a one once a week we had a training uh, like a physical training, and uh, we were kind of like singing national anthem in the gas masks in the park, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, I. At the age of 11, uh, we could try to put together a machine gun for, for the first time in my life. Um, and uh, it was really impressive uh, childhood because you know, all the writings on the top of the buildings you know, were saying, with Soviet Union forever, Communist Party the strongest gun in the hands of working class, with, with you know, so socialism won, and uh, uh, sayings like this. And, uh, this was a kind of a very, um, a very specific uh, time for me, like kind of uh, growing up in such a such a um, environment. I would say, actually, one uh, there was there were a few uh, things missing. Uh, we couldn't uh, buy a McDonald's and Coke in the normal shops, so that's why we did the revolution. And after revolution, you know, the writings were replaced by another, sorry, another writings. Like uh, we couldn't, you know, like there came the writings like, you know, Phillips, let's make things better, or always Coca-Cola. And uh, in my, you know, we kind of, you know, uh, the these cliches kind of uh, replaced uh, and, uh, cliches from the from the from the past, you know. So. We, we jumped totally in, uh, in, uh, from communism to consumerism. And I always, uh, uh, well, or try to kind of, you know, play with this uh, total opposite, you know, I, 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 was, I was witnessing. And um, the next, next picture is actually, you know, because in my work I very often use a, a change of context and um, this house is actually my playground. This, was, this used to be my playground where I spent all my uh, childhood. We, play, we were playing football there and games. And after revolution, you know, uh, it became a headquarters of uh, uh, foreign companies. So it was kind of uh, the same shape, same silhouette, got a different, uh, you know, kind of uh, shapes, you know, like, I mean, uh, different uh, usage like from uh, playground to the building, you know, and uh, one day I came there like with a, with a ball, you know, I wanted to play, fo play football, so I had a nice talk with the uh, reception clerks, you know, where is the playground? So he couldn't explain actually, because he was just, you know, the, uh, working there, and it was really a very special, special moment to, to uh, make this conversation. This is not a design shop, this is a souvenir shop from Prague, you know, as we, we got rid of, uh, actually, uh, Russian soldiers. Uh, so after the revolution, we, Prague was flooded with the army of matroshkas, you know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I have no idea why is it being sold in Prague, because it's very typical Russian, uh, uh, wonderful piece, like uh, souvenir stuff. 
and uh, it's being sold in Prague like a very typical Czech, you know, uh, thing. This is this is not a Chernobyl. This is a kind of a, this is a factory. Factory, we started uh, to work, you know, with a friend of mine. You know, when I when I when I um, finished uh, school, I did a diploma work, like uh, which was about, you know, uh, kind of a social critique about the system because we were actually, you know, uh, studying as designers, but the industry was not interested in uh, in our products uh, because they they took advantage of the fact that they were producing very cheap stuff for Russian and German market, you know, and. Uh, we had an idea to come to the uh, come to the directors of the manufacturers, you know, and uh, show them our stuff, you know. So I, we came there and introduced ourselves and show, showed them uh, one of these pieces, you know. And they said, "Oh my God!" You know, so they just uh, they just kicked us out, and uh, we were we were really disappointed because we thought it, you know, we are like uh, fresh designers, and they should like just. Uh, you know, at least discuss with us about a kind of a new, uh, new contextual, contextual ideas. So when they kicked us out, so we came back door, we kind of bribed the staff uh, in the factory and we started illegal production in, in the factory. You know, when, when, when the, and when, when the factory was fulfilled with our products and the directors found out, we had to make our business official. That's how actually we started our studio called Kubus in Prague. We were one of the first uh, design shops in Prague and uh, we wanted to, to show our, our pieces in, in a shelves in reality. And uh, this was an idea, I know, uh, about changing the, the, the context, you know, before the boot was protecting against the water, now it keeps the water. And it, it works totally opposite and um, it's uh, the way how, how, how I, th I, I think uh, one of the ways I, I, I really like to explore, you know, like using, using you know, uh, the similar shapes in totally different contexts. This is even like a decor with a very traditional ornament called uh, in German Zwiebelmuster, blue onion in, in English, which comes from Meissen. I was experimenting, you know, because as you, as you put ornament on top of shape it's you know people just love it you know it, you can just put it all over everything you know and people will just buy because of ornamentation so i was just you know like trying to kind of uh, explore the boundaries of uh, of, uh, of the shapes and uh, and decoration of possibilities of uh, kind of uh, you know, how how far can we go and this was a this was a uh, one of the uh, pieces, uh, you know, made around 1999. Um, uh, my idea was to kind of uh, make a fossil of, of those days, you know, when uh, make kind of a tableware for a fast generation who spend their time in the offices, you know, like eating uh, pizzas from card boxes and uh, pouring the hot water into the Chinese, you know, soup uh, cups, uh, eating, you know, baguettes from plastic. So I, I started to kind of uh, cast these uh, very, you know, these very uh, fast food shapes and translating it into porcelain. And uh, it was actually, you know, like a very, I was, I was very inspired by the fragility of a, um, of a, of a material, so like a paper, plastic and stuff, and uh, kind of made a whole, whole set for, 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 uh, for a new generation who kind of, uh, which kind of uh, uh, never actually experienced this, the culture of, of eating. We did a whole we did a whole collection of uh, of um, glass uh, products uh, uh, inspired by you know this is glass this is very this is we, we found the best craftsmen in our country because our uh, our idea was to produce we were set about the reality that every year you know there is a fact, one factory uh, being closed because they can't compete with China so we kind of found a really fantastic craftsman you know and asked them to copy the plastic you know to to kind of uh, Spent uh, time like by copying the, the the you know disposable shapes. They were from the beginning they were a bit angry, but finally they just uh, were for it, you know. And this is uh, this is a kind of a idea to make kind of a, you know it's called a sommelier. So it's about you know kind of a mixture of uh, fast food and kind of enjoying uh, of wine. And um, these shapes, shapes are really, you know, made by like stripe by stripe, very with very, very, you know, like a sophisticated weight of uh, welding glass. 
This was also part of my uh, diploma work. Uh, that's the silhouette of, of the Czech Republic, you know. So my idea was to kind of design a souvenir, which is, you know, totally concrete for Czechs and totally abstract for foreigners. So you can actually buy it, you know, and, uh, and you just, just, you know, talk with your friends, you know, you know this is, you know, the, where the peanut is. That's the place where I was born, you know, and uh, <laughs> kind of... Uh, I was, inspi I was inspired by uh, Al Alvar Alto Savoy Vase, actually, you know, which I found in Finland uh, one day, and I tried to make it uh, more concrete uh, compared to his piece, his masterpiece. And uh, there's also one of the pieces I did at the factory. I was, you know, when I, when I saw the process in the factory, so I was, bit, I was disappointed by the fact that they throw out so many pieces because of uh, small mistakes, you know, so I... I was fascinated by, 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 the, by the waste they, 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 they just throw out. And so I, I was running around the factory and making my personal sabotages, you know, just squashing the, the vases, you know, putting holes in, uh, in it and uh, kind of producing the waste, which people uh, 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 can buy. And it actually re really works uh, even better with the hole from, from inside than when you put the flower just in a, in a, in a proper way. The fake cake project was uh, about like, um, you know, we are all cooks in a way, like designers are preparing uh, new, new fresh stuff for, uh, for tomorrow. And uh, my idea was to kind of, you know, all people who buy the, the cakes are sure, can be 100% sure that I was uh, decorating the, the cakes. I spent, uh, you know, uh, uh, hours decorating each cake, you know, by different patterns. So there has been made like uh, hundreds of these cakes, and uh, my idea was uh, to kind of personalize each product. So this is actually mass-produced, uh, and that the, then the designer is decorating it and uh, touching it every single piece. This clock you can find it in a, in a souvenir shops in Prague, you know, covered with um, golden and cobalt ornamentation, you know, with a mechanical clock. And I found it actually uh, in white in a factory in a shelf, like hidden somewhere. And um, I just I, I fell in love with that shape, and uh, I, you know, kind of uh, wanted to apply like digital display, like high tech, you know, against the rococo shape. Uh, like the shape stays in the past and time is passing, you know, to kind of a show that uh, design can uh, get old. And uh, this was actually, you know, drilled in, uh, in the middle of a clock, you know, so there is also kind of a moment of do-it-yourself movement, which is very strong movement in our, in our country. And uh, but people used to, you know, create things. Uh, they kind of emigrated during the communism to, f to their cottages and they were creating a, you know, fantastic, you know, like they were welding f fences, you know, doing ashtrays, you know, designing themselves at homes because there was no actually products at, uh, in shops at all. So they, they were kind of uh, very creative in that way. And uh, I kind of, you know, this is uh, uh, kind of a destroyed shape by this, by, by this uh, digital display, which is very, very like uh, rough compared to the very, very, very uh, bourgeois uh, uh, shape. Uh, I'm being inspired actually by uh, by works of my colleagues or of, or, or or designers. Uh, instead of you know going uh, walking in, in a in a forest, I I um, I love walking in the supermarkets and uh, just uh, instead of carving you know something out of a twigs or wood, so I use I buy products and kind of cut them and make them you know. Uh, uh, try to kind of uh, uh, redesign them. So this is actually the the icon of a design uh, made by Philip Stark. And uh, actually, people when they buy, they always put it into the shelf you know, and never use it. So actually, it doesn't function at all because the the, the lemon you know like drops all around. And uh, I, when I, I cut it, it and it's it's fantastic to see the walks you know just dripping in a, in, a, in the same spot you know. And it's very very functional piece after 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 uh, you know. T uh, touching it, you know. I, I think that the designers should be responsible for, for the shapes they produce, and uh, I think we have a right to, to kind of uh, continue on, uh, on uh, redesigning it. This is a ceramic uh, ping pong table. Uh, 
I just wanted to, you know, kind of make a, a much more uh, enthusiastic uh, kind of a feelings when you when you washing up. You know, you, there is a sink in the middle with a with a faucet. You know, so this is a kind of a kind of a uh, the idea that uh, it can be a, a much more fun to, to to wash up. You know, while just uh, people are just. Uh, I was we are actually trying to to play the ping pong and it really works. People just sitting around, you know, they, have, they can have a meal all around and while, while someone is washing up, you know, so we can, they can discuss together and uh, it's quite, uh, quite uh, uh, surprising it worked. <laughs> this is, uh, the, the, these uh, pieces are called uh, money boxes and my idea was to take uh, very traditional sculptures uh, from a very traditional manufacturer called uh, Royal Dukes. And uh, actually, uh, you know, normally you can find these uh, the animals like totally covered with, uh, you know, like like squirrel is brown and and and, uh, and a bird is really bluish and uh, greenish, you know, and it's very kind of a kitschy style. So I kind of left it uh, white and just made a hole into it. Like um, my idea was to kind of uh, people who who buy it, they, they are not sure if they buy the piece of art or design box where they spend money inside you know so uh, at the end actually you you are you should like destroy the piece of art to get the money uh, from inside <laughs> so actually the idea is that uh, we 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 kind of uh, invest money to to uh, three dimensional object and this is a kind of a uh, while the, while you destroying it you can it's kind of uh, you know you lose the value of a, of a product, but then you get the money back again, you know. <laughs> and that's the reaction for the, uh, on the like Matroshka, you, you saw in the first picture, you know, I, I was very, you know, like fascinated by, by that shape, and I wanted to make a very typical Czech uh, souvenir out of it, so I, I translated it in, uh, to porcelain. So I did a, did a uh, like kind of a new new uh, new age matryoshkas out of out of uh, uh, this, this very very fragile material. So it's actually a very you know it's a very symbolic for us because you never know you know how many pieces are inside. It was, it was same like with the Russian tank. You know you never knew how many soldiers are inside. You know so <laughs> it's very it's very a very strong uh, strong uh, piece for for Czechs actually. This, this project is called uh, Norwegian Wood, um, and uh, it was actually designed by me and by the Beatles. When I and uh, I, I'm being, you know, like inspired by, by by music very often, and I never knew actually what what what, uh, what is the Norwegian wood, what how how does it look like, you know, and uh, so I kind of tried to, you know, one, one night I had a dream, you know, that. Uh, it was, it was somewhere on a table, you know, so when I woke up, I just make a quick drawing and then I kind of model it and I cast it into the porcelain and made a kind of candle holder out of, it, out of the song. This, this uh, hat is called uh, Ornament and Crime. It's um, Mr. Vladimir Ilyich Lenin uh, with the ornament on top of it. It's, name, it's named uh, after the Adolf Loss's essay, Ornament and Crime. And, uh, it was really interesting. In uh, the first first bust was covered with uh, fulfilled uh, with white ornamentation on top of the you know uh, hat, so people couldn't see it from the, like uh, four meters uh, distance. So they kind of you know hated it. Like they from the first, from the beginning they saw the hat you know, and uh, as they were coming closer you know they started to kind of uh, explore the ornamentation and they forgot it about the Lenin and then they they. They started to f fall in love with ornamentation, you know. So my, so I was really interesting, you know, what, what can happen, you know, if people just, uh, you know, forget about an idea, about the ideology, and focus on the sh on the surface. This comes from the, you know, very uh, from a, we were experimenting with the welding uh, of glass, so so these pieces are uh, uh, also made with. Uh, uh, collaboration of a really fantastic uh, craftsmen in our country, and uh, the actually the, the sugar shaker on the left side, uh, I named it like uh, from the beginning, like death of the snowman, and uh, after that I have to rename it uh, for the life of a snowman because it was uh, very, very unpopular in between the sellers, so we had to rename it. 
from the same series. Uh, it's called Candelier. You can actually, you know, adjust it. You know, you can put, uh, you can just take it uh, apart, and you can create uh, a huge chandelier on your table. You can you can move it, uh, the different parts of uh, of, the, of it, as it is connected by a glass stick together, and. Uh, you can actually make your own constellation, like with stars. You can create, you know, constellations like Big Dipper or different kind of uh, uh, astrological uh, movements on, from the sky. Also, very, very uh, uh, technological, technologically uh, hard stuff I'm, uh, made uh, out of uh, filters being used in. Uh, industry for filtering the liquid uh, metal, liquid iron. And we, it's kind of a vase, uh, it's transparent, and uh, you can just, there is a glass inside, so you can pour, pour uh, water inside and it doesn't uh, uh, go through. This is very, uh, this is very typical, you know, kind of bourgeois style. Uh, Czech producers are uh, producing for uh, for uh, R Russia for Russian market, and uh, uh, I washed uh, all the golden ornamentation and put uh, put uh, very primitive, very you know, basic uh, dots you can find on the most ordinary cups, you know, and uh, I always you know uh, work with the existing shapes because. Uh, in a way, it's very ecological. You don't have to kind of spend uh, too much material, you know, in an industrial uh, in, in industry, you know, like uh, making molds and stuff. So many companies uh, just use the same similar shapes or the same shapes with different decoration every year. So this was a kind of a, like a mixture, like between the like a kind of a crossroad between these simple decoration and the bourgeois kind of uh, uh, motifs. Uh, project called or, or product called uh, Little Joseph. I was inspired by the fact that uh, you know design is getting old. So uh, when you buy it, you know it gets old with you. And uh, actually, um, the idea is that when a candle burns, it drips and it creates a hairdo. So it kind of uh, changes its 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 shape uh, together with you, like while 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 you're using it. So actually. Um, my idea was to kind of create a kind of a, you know a symbol, like a baby which is like developing or kind of uh, changing its substance in front of you while using it. This is an abstract collection. I, when, when we were students, we used to model model busts or life figures, you know, like uh, like uh, one to one, you know, like life size. So. Uh, those who did the best copies uh, got the best results. So, in this case, I took uh, instead of a still life, you know, I, I went to supermarket and and I bought a bottle of ketchup, bottle of Coke, Mr. Proper, mineral water, bottle of wine, and and a beer can, and kind of remodeled it in a, in a way of Giacometti. I did a, like a special still life and uh, and uh, kind of made it made the real uh, products uh, uh, really abstract. And I was decorating it by different, uh, you know, patterns, existing uh, patterns like gold, like golden base, and uh, and uh, very handmade, uh, you know, flowerish uh, decorations. And uh, the idea was to create kind of a. This is a model. This is a, to create kind of a comfortable way of suffering. You know, like uh, the <laughs> the cross should be lighter and more ergonomic. You know, so no more trip, no more triple tripping. You know, and uh, and. Uh, Kind of new missile should be kind of comfortable with the shape, and uh, as it, it was uh, 1999, so the whole world was expecting new missile. So I, I was really prepared for it, <laughs> and uh, I did it in a uh, life scale. It really worked, and it actually ended up in a church. <laughs> and we had a fantastic discussion with the bishop about the role of church and the design. I was really surprised, and uh, they really paid the, the production, and uh, it's really there. It's not a Photoshop, and uh, and uh, it works. Believers don't don't complain too much, <laughs> and uh, so I actually offered it to Catholics for the first time, and they were not not comfortable with the with the you know fiberglass. 
they needed uh, a wood and uh, Jesus on top of it. So uh, this was not my actual idea. So I went to Protestants and they kind of found it very in inspiring. <laughs> and uh, they, 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 gave, they gave me money to realize it. I, I was not paid, but I was very happy to, to, to finalize the project. It was it actually placed in a fantastic, modernistic uh, arch, uh, church, you know, uh, built in the 30s by a very progressive ar Czech architect. And this is one of our other projects we did uh, with Jakub Berdich, uh, who is my uh, business partner in Kubus. He started the restoration of this uh, you know, Baroque church, uh, and uh, his idea was to leave all the remainings. We, we scraped off the, the paintings, so you can see the history you know, passing through the wall. You know, like uh, there is a Baroque uh, details. You know, even like a socialistic, you know, electric kind of a cable. So you can see the, the lines. You know, so we left all the all the stains, and. Um, our, our idea was to kind of uh, you know apply something. We were actually not paid for this project, so because uh, otherwise they would just kick us out with, with with our ideas, you know. So it was a surprise for the village. Actually, we did it like uh, uh, you know last day of a deadline, and uh, we, we just we just we just told them you know there will be very nice chairs in it and uh, nice chandeliers and. and uh, and so uh, everything was a kind of a surprise for them. So we, we, we took uh, Panton chairs and we uh, water jet cut, you know, the cross in a, in a, in a back seat. So it, it's, you know, it's very transparent. It makes the, the chair more lighter. And um, uh, we, we bought uh, around 150, you know, Persian carpets in a second hand shops and uh, put it there. So our, our idea was to kind of a create a, something between church and mosque, which, which was actually our uh, punk idea, our, our secret, like a hidden, hidden concept. And uh, <laughs> they still don't, didn't find out, actually. <laughs> you see the, the details of, a, of, a, of it's very nice to, 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 to have. A, I was inspired when I visited Istanbul, you know, the Hagia Sophia. So, so we kind of uh, try to make kind of you know exchange of uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, religions in this place. The chandeliers are made out of rough cut uh, crystal, which means you don't have to pay you know uh, really expensive chandeliers because no one sees the chandelier from this uh, distance of 10 meters, so no one really cares you know if it's cut or not. So we really uh, bought it in a cheap way you know like left it with all the fluffy details you know, which uh, people can't see from 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 the from the floor. Once uh, my Neighbors asked me, they, uh, they started to represent you know, uh, a company called The Reef, uh, and they produce kind of a beach fashion, like slippers and shirts and stuff, which is very much about you know, kind of a Brazilian aesthetics, like uh, orchids, you know, flowers, and uh, uh, actually, it, it's you know, uh, very, very hard to distribute such a, such a you know, summer th things in a country where there is a minus 20 in the winter, you know. But anyway, uh, they uh, kind of uh, rented a, a space, uh, the shop, and asked me to think about the name as well. So when I came there, there was a, you know, a writing orthopedia on a, uh, on the top of the door, and I was really, uh, I was really, I admired this writing because it's like a really a 50s, uh, 50s uh, style. There is an orthopedia, and under it there is a, a, a writing called. Uh, national company, it was from a socialistic period, you know. So when I saw it, I just told them, you know, just cut off the first three letters and the last three letters, and the hope just appeared. So they just, uh, you know, we just left the, the hope in the middle of orthopedia, uh, and uh, we did it like as a corporate identity of whole concept. And uh, I, I did a special installation for them, you know, which looked like a kind of a Exotic butterflies, like uh, collectors have in the boxes, you know, at home. So all the slippers, slippers were kind of uh, people kind of, you know, came and just, you know, uh, watched the collection. So idea was to kind of uh, to uh, show in a really very uh, sophisticated way, you know. It, well, I didn't like to make it like a normal uh, skate shops uh, all around Prague. So this was a really kind of uh, a very, very progressive client for me. I was very happy with that project. 
I was involved in uh, one installation called Fragile, and, uh, and uh, I did a model of my country, and uh, then, I, I, then I put, uh, it was all about porcelain and glass, and uh, I just uh, was taking the designs, like made by fa fantastic designers, uh, like from Cubist period, for example, uh, other designers uh, from 50s, 60s, you know, and we were doing the installation in the landscape, on the top of the mountains, you know, there was a snow, you know, coming fr from the ceiling. There was a kind of a kind of a um, natural, you know, like bird, birds singing, and uh, and it was all all about, you know, kind of uh, context of a country where where the kaolin is actually mine. You know, there are, we have the biggest kaolin mine, so all this stuff uh, was produced uh, in a place. So it was all about, you know, the country it comes from. This is a um, pro project called uh, Catastrophe, and uh, I did it for uh, for a Mint Gallery in London. And uh, my idea was to kind of I was really seduced uh, by uh, we have you know there is mu much uh, ex exploration in terms of you know archaeologists you know digging ground in Prague because uh, new supermarkets are being uh, built and. Uh, I'm always, you know, like uh, passing by and uh, looking at uh, how they are s slowly working and uh, trying to kind of uh, estimate uh, the dates by the by the uh, uh, kind of boxes they find, you know, or pieces they found in the ground. So my idea was to create kind of a uh, hidden shape, you know, like a discovery, so people can re really realize, you know, what's what's uh, behind the behind the shape, you know, because actually our history is. Uh, we we know how we how you know we we, we kind of estimate uh, our uh, history from Egypt Egyptian or Roman uh, uh, ceramic vases. Uh, so we know how people dressed, you know, what people uh, how how they lived, you know, what was the furniture like. So this is a kind of a hidden. So people will never wash it, uh, you know, from uh, you know, and uh, it's like a stays like a kind of archaeological uh, thing forever. There was like uh, different uh, different pieces like uh, glued on top of it. I did an installation for uh, Capellini, uh, which, which is a fantastic furniture producer, and I, I was asked to create you know uh, something for a new collection of, for a, for a, for actually a collection called uh, Bugatti chairs uh, and. Um, my idea was to kind of, I was inspired by, uh, by uh, you know, knitted uh, baskets, very traditional, in traditional way in Czech Republic. So I, it was a huge, uh, huge transportation thing, you know, I, I, we transported 1,500 tires, which was, you know, two trucks, you know, it, it, uh, the weight was 10 tons, and I was really afraid it will kill someone in a, in, in a showroom, you know. So it was really hard work, we had to repaint all, everything on white, you know. And then I was doing, you know, different kind of a wall, wall kind of a shapes all around the all around the furniture, designed by uh, international designers. You know, adding uh, flowers on uh, on uh, top of the structures. You know, playing with the tires uh, because there's one of the biggest uh, dumping place, uh, which is you know focused on uh, on uh, on the tires in our country, and uh, uh, we made a kind of a deal. So. So we could use it and, uh, and uh, repaint it, uh, and uh, kind of. Uh, I was actually creating also new tables out of it, and and and, and a mirror you see on on the right, and uh, like kind of uh, it reminds some kind of a bar bar baroque uh, baroque uh, kind of a shape from uh, Spain, and uh, this is a uh, like a different inst different like installation how it worked. So you could you can actually. You can actually make you know, different curves with it. Uh, the exhibition was called uh, Design Race, so my, because uh, there's a lot of pieces called like Bugatti Lotus. You know, the, the company has something to do with the Ferrari, and uh, they also did the interior for a new Fiat. Uh, so there was kind of uh, two meanings. Like you have a design race because we are like designers are you know. All, Always preparing, you know, new products for a new salon and new fairs every year. Kind of uh, competing uh, in terms of curves and glossy shapes and stuff. And um, the other meaning of the of 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 exhibition was uh, like a 
you know, I meant a kind of a race because Capoin is one of the you know the best races in terms of furniture, like the, the uh, other companies following him. I became also um, I became uh, like I'm involved uh, in a furniture company called uh, Upe Zaudi, which I became a creative director, and uh, this is the collection you know. Um, uh, consists of uh, uh, different styles, you know, some of the shapes are done uh, by uh, uh, Mr. Halabala, you know, in the 20s, 30s, so we, our idea was to kind of uh, recreate this, uh, this fantastic brand, you know, uh, which started in the 20s and uh, was the biggest uh, furniture producer in those days, you know, and during the, during the socialism, during the 70s, they actually uh, uh, created like five wagons a day of furniture and sending it direction Moscow, you know, and this was called sector furniture, like boxes and boxes, very simple stuff, uh, actually very ugly stuff, and uh, this company kind of uh, disappeared from market during the years, and now there is, you know, they, they try to kind of uh, refresh the first idea of a founder, you know, like uh, to create uh, uh, furniture in a, in, a, in a context of our country, you know, being made in our country, so uh, we kind of uh, uh, created a uh, you know, whole concept and new shapes uh, for this company with other uh, designers. This is a, the, the chair on the picture is uh, from the 20s, actually one of the first uh, designs of him. This is a library called Fabrica, uh, designed by me. I, my idea was, you know, because Czechs are very good in uh, putting, you know, the stuffed animals and uh, some, some horrible things on the top shelf. So I did it, I did it like, uh, you know, in a way that people can't put uh, anything, you know, valuable and or, uh, or uh, crystal or glass or ceramic, whatever. So it always stays the same. And it's like kind of a, in the shape of trapeze. So, so it's like, it, you know, it's, uh, the, the, the space is not flat, it's divided by the lines, by, the, by, by its structure, so uh, it's like a very uh, typical uh, kind of a shape of uh, factories from, uh, from the beginning of the last century. May I just uh, uh, show you the, the last video as we have a few seconds to, to go, so I show you the two minute film then, and um, it will be very fast. <laughs> That's it. Um, it's about the history, actually, about the whole uh, story of a, of a company.